Up next this afternoon, what about the economy of North Carolina and the landscape of the state? Let's talk about the strategies that are being employed to enhance economic resilience in the face of any and all global challenges. So please welcome to the stage Christy Jones, Chief of Staff of North Carolina Governor Roy Cooper. Christy. Well, good afternoon, everyone. It is an honor to be here. I want to make it clear Governor Cooper gave me good instructions. Recruit all these companies to North Carolina. <laughs> so that is my task, and I like to stay on task. I have a wonderful panel here, but before I get started, I do want to thank the leadership and the folks at SAS for bringing us here. They are one of our biggest recruiters. Wouldn't you love to work in a place like this? <laughs> it is beautiful. So thank you all for having us. We're going to talk a little bit about why and how North Carolina has been ranked the number one state to do business by CNBC for two years in a row. That's pretty tough to do. Any of you watch sports, it's hard to have a comeback here. <laughs> but we came back and so we want to talk about it. And the first key element to North Carolina being successful in business and economic development is collaboration. And our panelists here are a good example of collaboration. I have worked with all three of them. We all bring different perspectives to economic development in North Carolina. And I want to introduce them. To my right, we have Mr. Christopher Chung, who is the CEO of the Economic Development Partnership of North Carolina. I would like to say that every state needs a Chris Chung, but I don't want you to take him away from me. <laughs> <laughs> then we have Ms. Denise Quarles, who I've had the pleasure of working with, and her title is the Head of External Affairs for the Southeastern Region for Siemens USA. She and I have collaborated a lot, and we're very grateful for the expansion she and her team have brought to North Carolina. So glad to have her with us. And then we have my new friend, Mark Lawson, who is the president of the Cary Chamber of Commerce here. And he is working hard to make sure Cary is not only the greatest place to work, but also the greatest place to live, and so appreciate his leadership. As I mentioned, we come about economic development in different ways, but it is a collaborative effort. And in North Carolina, that's one thing that we do. I know a lot of you hear about times that we don't get along in North Carolina. Nobody likes to talk about the times we work really well together. And when it comes to economic development in North Carolina, we work really, really well together. And so I want to talk to our panelists a little bit about that and get their perspectives. And I'll start with you, Chris. What role does the Economic Development Partnership of North Carolina play in North Carolina in connecting new and existing businesses to the resources required for economic growth and stability? And you may want to give them a little background on EDPN. I will. Thank you so much, Christy. Our organization is about 10 years old, and we resulted when a number of economic development roles were spun out of state government into a public-private nonprofit model. It's an approach that probably 20 states around the country have adopted in some form or fashion. But as states wage this very competitive battle to attract their unfair share, of job creation and investment and economic development. They're always looking for different approaches that may up their game. And so North Carolina took that approach about nine years ago. To Christie's question, of course, we want to be there as the first point of contact. When companies are looking at North Carolina for their future growth and expansion, as was the case, for example, with Siemens and their new locomotive manufacturing plant that's going in the middle part of North Carolina, we get to serve on behalf of the governor, his secretary of commerce, and really, frankly, the state of North Carolina in being that first point of contact to help these companies understand the advantages of doing business in our state. Whether that's the workforce availability, whether that's the business climate, the regulatory regime, taxes, incentives, cost of energy, quality of life, whatever those factors are as companies are making this very important decision on where their future growth goes, we want to be that first resource for them to answer the questions that they might have about North Carolina, but of course, promoting North Carolina as the best possible location that they could be choosing from for that very important investment. Yes, and I would like to note, we don't compete with each other. We work together. We only compete with other states. That's right, absolutely. So, yes, of course, it goes Chris without Young saying. Goes and without Secretary saying. Sanders work right. very well together right, yes. and are a dynamic duo, and we're grateful for them. All right, Denise. 
In your work at Siemens, how are you able, working with different levels of government to increase economic growth and opportunity? You know what, Christy, first I almost want to just say hashtag what he said. <laughs> um, because when Chris said, you know, they want to serve as that kind of first line of, of communication for us, uh, Chris, is, Chris is telling the truth. Um, I always like to say also, you could try to give some hard examples, but when I got called to say, could I participate on this panel? I'm like, this is where I need to be because this is one of those places where it's so easy to show you, right? Mm -hmm. Because as Christy said, we just put another stake in the ground here. Um, and so when you ask that question about how important is it to work at all levels, I'm, it is crucial. It is absolutely crucial for us. And we spent a lot of time looking for opportunities to work with um, elected officials, as well as those supporting organizations like Chris and, and, and Mark as well. So it is crucial for that collaboration and partnership as we're looking in. Um, it worked because we, again, have already had a footprint here in the state of North Carolina with over 5,000 employees. And with our new rail manufacturing facility, we are going to add an additional 500 employees, $220 million of investment. So collaboration works. Collaboration works. We are grateful for that expansion. And I think you touched on it that it's not just from the state level. Locals are so very important to the collaboration process. And Mark, if you'll talk about how you and the Cary Chamber of Commerce help strengthen economic opportunity for local businesses. Sure. Well, I would say the first thing is we try to be good listeners. We want to find out what the issues are, what the needs are, and then it's engagement with those organizations and really finding out just what they need. And once we proactively engage them, find out what their needs are, then we want to engage our partners. And you've heard a lot about partnership already. So we engage our partners, we align the proper resources to address their needs. And that continues that type of collaboration, whether it's with higher education, with an organization like Denise's or Chris's. And we just try to make sure that we solve what they're looking for and what those issues are. And then we really want to make sure as we try to look at our local economy that we don't forget about um, the larger businesses either. We want to continue to engage with our large employers like SAS or Siemens, for example. And then it also we pay really close attention to people that want to develop a business, that want to become an entrepreneur. Uh, we try to foster the environment that really fits what they need and again align them with partners and resources because we want them to be successful. And then last but certainly not least, um, we want a pro-business environment. And so thanks to our state partners, our local government, and our council, uh, we've got a wonderful uh, tax environment for someone that's looking to start a business or expand their business. And then obviously when you think of quality of life and infrastructure, all those things come into play as what the work that we do at the chamber to support our local businesses. Indeed, you know, he spoke about resources. In addition to all of this support and collaboration, we understand that workforce is very crucial to economic development. Companies come where there is the workforce and I want to talk to you all a little bit about workforce. Um, Chris, from your perspective, tell us about some of the ways North Carolina focuses on getting the workforce for the jobs you're, we have and the jobs you're recruiting. Well, absolutely. As you can imagine, when North Carolina gets that first phone call, whether it's coming to Governor Cooper or to Secretary Sanders or to our organization, we're hearing a list of those criteria that are gonna really drive the decision for that company on where they grow and invest. And you can imagine, especially in this kind of labor climate, availability of that skilled talent is top of the list for pretty much every single company that we get the chance to talk with every day. How are we going to meet the needs of these companies should they choose to expand here like Siemens is doing and like hundreds of others have announced alongside the governor over the past couple of years alone? You've got organic talent production. Of course, that is a function of our two and four year universities. We have a wonderful network of community colleges for those who do not live here in North Carolina. It's one of our proudest selling points, these 58 community colleges all across North Carolina that specialize in training for the needs of industry. Of course, incredible four year public and private universities, the UNC system, Duke University, Wake Forest, Elon, on and on. We have 
Debating on which metric, I like to use the one that puts us first, but we have the largest number of historically black colleges and universities, which are also crucial to a diverse talent strategy that so many employers are focused on. We've got 100,000 active duty military serving in North Carolina, of which roughly 15 to 20,000 every year are exiting military duty, re-entering civilian life. That's a tremendous pool of talent that employers can avail themselves of. Add to all of that the fact that North Carolina continues to be among the fastest growing states in the country because of domestic in-migration. People moving here from New York, New Jersey, Ohio, California, Florida, people who skew towards the younger end of the working age spectrum, people who have at least some college education. You can see this is a tremendously potent recipe for any company that is concerned about locating in a place where they can source, train, and retain the talent that they need to be successful in their industries. And we have all of that going on in North Carolina. I think it's a big part of why we've been so successful is we have this tremendously attractive product that this state represents. Thank you. Denise, you and your teams have gone through this and are going through this. How have you found the workforce needed for the jobs you have and the jobs you're looking to fill? Sure, so the manufacturing facility that we talked about is going to be located in Lexington, North Carolina. Um, we actually had the groundbreaking just a month or so back. So we do have a little while before we will be running production. Um, but to some of the examples that Chris gave, um, we are working with a lot of state resources in order to try to source some of that talent. So we have 500 or so jobs that are going to be created. Um, we do have some um, staff that are going to come from other locations. That's not where the bulk of that workforce is coming from. Um, but, you know, we, 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 we're going to have some work to do. We're going to have some work to do. And the great thing is that we have, we have partners. And then, Christy, if I can give one other reference point. Um, so at Siemens, I have the luxury of wearing two hats. So not only am I a part of our government affairs team, I also serve on the Siemens Foundation Board of Directors. Mm -hmm. And so one of the other initiatives that we have here recently is that we have made a $30 million 10-year commitment um, because we recognize um, electric vehicle infrastructure and what that's going to mean. And so North Carolina is actually one of the states that we partner with um, through the North Carolina, make sure I get this right, Christy, the North Carolina Business Committee on Education. Yes, and to be uh, for, so, um, so that is one of the partnerships and it was just announced last week, but that's some of the investment that we recognize that where the talent may not be here today, we got to train them up, right? Yeah. And so we need to look for opportunities and how do we take in partners? So we are looking high, we are looking low. <laughs> Um, I think there's the opportunity out there. And again, I think that's another great investment because for, like I said, it's over 10 years, $30 million. And for the state of North Carolina in particular, I think it's 1.67 million, but it's going to be partnering with the educational institutions here. Again, identify the talent and then help to figure out how to get those resources trained so that when it is time and we need to fill those positions, whether it's Siemens, hopefully it is Siemens, <laughs> but other resources that are out there that the talent is there, we all need to figure out how do we take in and do our part. I think that's outstanding and appreciate that investment in North Carolina and it goes a long way to long term. We can't just fill the jobs we have vacant today or the mm -hmm. ones we'll have in five years. We've got to create a workforce for 20, 30 years out. It's a long term gain. So Mark, I want you to talk about, you're right here in Cary, you've got NC State, Chapel Hill, North Carolina Central, so many universities right around here, RTP. Talk about workforce development in this particular area. Well, I, I think it's really important for everybody to know that we have a plethora of resources, and Christy just alluded to several of them, but when you think about the largest community college system in the country right here and all that they offer, and then our partners are very strong over at NC State, certainly Duke, UNC Chapel Hill, North Carolina A&T, North Carolina Central. You think about ag tech, you think about healthcare, you think about advanced manufacturing. Those partnerships are critical to what we do, not only on the recruitment side, but as we're talking to companies that have expansion needs, we have those resources that we can align. They're partners. This is not a first introduction. These are long-standing partnerships that just continue to pay dividends, and it's to 
meet the workforce challenges, but it's also to think about those partners are great about creating internships, apprenticeships, and that really feeds well into what all these companies are looking for is, is finding talent, educating them, and training up that talent so they can be the workforce of tomorrow. And so, you know, as we kind of round out here, I want you all to have the opportunity to say, what do you think North Carolina's key, one of their key elements in our success? Chris, tell what you tell around the world why people should come to North Carolina. It, it's hard to go wrong with our workforce story. Again, we've all touched on that in our answer. And of course, like Christy said, it's not just what we're immediately producing today. I mean, we, we didn't even have a chance to touch in this few minutes we have with everyone today about the importance of K through 12 education and how that sets the foundation. Whatever success, whoever is sitting up here 20 years from today talking about how great North Carolina is, that's a direct function of how much and how we're investing in our public education system here in North Carolina. How are we imparting the technical skills, but also the soft, durable skills that will enable those young people? I mean, I've got kids that are three and one, so who knows what they're gonna be doing in 20 years, but the education they get in North Carolina's school systems is gonna directly impact their ability to be successful contributors to society. And I think that's one of those things that it's hard to take the long game, right? I mean, economic development is scored very much on what deal did you just win this past year? But I think for any state to be successful, it takes that commitment to look at long term, what do we want to be as a state? What do we want the economy to look like? How do we want our citizens to participate in that economy as fully as possible? And then most importantly, how do we make those investments in that future vision that none of us will benefit from, but our kids and their kids are going to be the direct beneficiaries of? And that's the hardest public policy question. We're thinking about that. We have a lot of smart people in government and the private sector working together every day Business Committee on Education, obviously being one example, but a lot of people thinking about what this looks like, but it's not easy. But it takes events like this, where we're talking about the big ideas that shape the future of North Carolina and our country, uh, but I'm confident we'll get there. I'm a transplant to North Carolina. We've been here nine years. We absolutely love it. This is our future, and we're not the only ones. Hundreds of thousands of people <laughs> move here every year, much to the consternation of, I'm sure, some of the native <laughs> North Carolina folks, but it's part of our secret sauce is people want to be here they want to build their lives and careers here, and that gives us a start that very few other states can even touch in terms of our competitiveness. So Denise, your team made the decision. You could have gone anywhere in the world. Why did you pick North Carolina? Well, you know, um, there were a couple of things, Christy. Um, one, we did want to, just because of the main line of that business, we wanted to be on the East Coast. And mm. so you check that box. Um, we wanted to make sure that there was nice, moderate weather. You really, really check that box today. <laughs> um, we wanted to make sure that it was a friendly place to do business. You check that box. Thank you both. Um, we wanted to make sure that there was a workforce that's here. You guys talked about that education system that's here and, and the access. So you check all of these respective boxes and so you actually made it, made it pretty easy for us to be here. But I will tell you, I brought this piece of paper up here because as I sat to listen to all the sessions today, it was so incredible. When Chris talks about that magic and that secret sauce, it's the folks in this audience. Mm -hmm. The amount of knowledge sharing about public-private partnerships and that information has been so incredibly valuable. Even, I don't know if the lady's still here that was from Google, and she talked about some of the search engines and having access to businesses. I mean, that was good information because to me, as I'm talking to our stakeholders within our value chain, there were so many nuggets of information that was in this room today that I want to leverage and use. And so to me, part of that secret sauce, what brings us here is the people. It's really the people and the knowledge here. I'm selling y'all. Come on, Mark. <laughs> Why should they come to Cary? Well, I think the quality of life, I think, is second to none of anywhere in the country. And I truly believe that. I think the amount of investment in infrastructure, in parks and recreation, we have a very diverse population in Cary. And I think when you mix all those factors together, it's very welcoming. And it certainly comes down to the people. It's a very friendly place, whether you're just getting established in business or you're just moving to the area. There's really something for everyone. And I think our community, our town leadership, our council, our town executives have done a tremendous amount of work that, and also a lot of investment 
that will pay dividends for decades for my children and their grandchildren and so on that um, Cary is just an attractive place and it's a place that people don't want to leave. Once you come here, you don't want to leave. Well, I'll, I'll final wrap this up. Our workforce, our focus on education, our weather, our location. <laughs> we are business friendly. We believe and have a great quality of life. And there's something for everybody and the people are wonderful. We welcome you to North Carolina. Yes. Chris looks forward to recruiting your teams here and we'll give you the remainder 10 seconds to call your folks back at home and say, we're moving to North Carolina. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>